turn out for this event. Thank you so much for coming today on this rainy afternoon and spending some time together with the International Studies Department and our esteemed guests. Uh, my name is Amanda Wilson and I'm a career advisor and international services liaison with the Pomeranes Career Center. And I am one of the career advisors for the international studies majors as well as specializing in international student career resources and more generally in anyone who's interested in working abroad. Um, so I'll be today's moderator. And I'm very pleased, as I said, for you all to be here. There's some resources uh, from the Career Center in your packet. I wanted to point out our services and events brochure, which is the blue brochure that you have. If you forget what I look like or what my name is, but you'd like to meet with me later to discuss your own um, career options, my name and photo is on the back, as well as our other career advisors. And information, um, including our career strategies timeline, is on the inside. Um, so you can start thinking about some things that you can check off of your career to-do list yet this semester, right, and into next semester. So that's available for you. We also have the career exploration card. So if you need to do some career exploration, as it says, um, we have some options including a course which you can take um, where we'll sort of structure that exploration process, as well as find your focus sessions. That's a new program that we're offering that provide structure to the exploration process through a series of advising appointments. So you can attend one of those intro sessions to learn more about that. And in order to, I guess I should mention, schedule an appointment with me, um, you can do that through HireHawk.com. HireHawk.com is our online recruiting system and also where all of our career advising appointments are made. So you can visit HireHawk. Um, and set up an appointment at your convenience. So if the mood strikes you at midnight uh, that you really need to do some career exploration and you'd like to be an advisor, you can schedule that even for the next day. Um, and so please consider making an appointment if you would like. All right, today I have the pleasure of introducing our first panelist, Laura Wonderlin, we have here in the middle. Thank you, Laura, for coming. Um, I'm pleased to say that Lauren graduated from the University of Iowa in 2011, double majoring in International Studies and Journalism. So perhaps you even know some people here, see some familiar faces. She studied Arabic at the University of Jordan during a semester abroad and traveled extensively in the region. Laura also spent a summer in Taiwan working with other teens from around the world. She led a volunteer spring break program in the southern United States with Students Today, Leaders Forever while on campus. And after college, Laura began working at the U.S. Committee for Refugees and Immigrants, placing new refugees in employment. She later transitioned to the resettlement program and helped new refugees immediately upon arrival. Due to budget cuts, Laura was let go from this position in September of this year and is looking forward to her next big adventure. Thank you for joining us, Laura. Thank you. Well, caveat to that, I did accept a new job, so I'll be starting there on Monday. So, yay, more unemployment. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of what led me to working with refugees and kind of where I'm going next in my um, career. So, I did graduate in 2011, um, and I didn't always want to go into international studies and journalism. It wasn't something that I like, grew up wanting to do. I actually wanted to be an actress for far too long and wanted you know, to go to UCLA and major in theater and all that. But my summer in Taiwan was really sort of the turning point for me. I um, had the opportunity to work with all these teens from around the world and I kind of opened my eyes to what else was out there and who else was out there and how I could make an impact, not necessarily just doing policy work, but actually on the ground working, um, which is something that I definitely did at USCRI. Um, I, uh, following, when I graduated, I graduated a year early, and I moved back to Des Moines, and I had no idea what I wanted to do, you know, what was in Des Moines that I could do, and I was living in my parents' basement, and I was going crazy, <laughs> so the, the biggest thing I can tell you um, is make sure you are networking with, with people. That is so key, and I know that's very trite and cliche. But I wouldn't have gotten my job at USCRI if I hadn't had networked. Um, I stayed in contact with a, a girl that I studied abroad with, and she was an intern at USCRI, which was um, very new at the time. It had only been open in Des Moines for six months. And she was the intern, and she you know, had heard that 
I was looking for a job, probably because I was on Facebook begging people to give me tips. Um, <laughs> so she, you know, we had we had coffee and, and dinner, and we'd stayed in contact. So she passed along my resume um, to to the director of the office, and several months later, I got the job. The nature of nonprofits sometimes takes a while to to actually get started. Um, so I, I'm not on LinkedIn. I don't have a LinkedIn or anything like that. And that, you know, LinkedIn is great, obviously, but make sure you're making those connections in person um, because you'll never really know how a, br a bridge that you've developed or someone that you've made, how they may be able to help you in the future and how, um, you know, you might be able to help them as well. So that's sort of my um, number one tip. Um, another great resource, um, wherever you really end up, is get involved with the Young Professionals Organization in your community. You know, I moved back and I had no friends or anything, and I knew Des Moines had a pretty strong um, young professionals group. And I jumped in and made friends, and um, it's a great place to even develop volunteer work. They always have volunteer opportunities or sports, um, you know, networking events where you can meet different people. And again, that's a, a great way to network in person and really get to know, um, you know, what's, what's out there in your community. And with this job I just accepted at Easter Seals, again, that was all through networking that I got this position as well. Um, it was a volunteer that I worked with during my time at USCRI, and she, again, <laughs> put it on Facebook that I was looking for a job. She um, saw that, and she recommended me for this position, and within one week, I was, I was hired. So, um, you know, those, those connections do work, and I know it can kind of be scary to put yourself out there like that, but it is a fantastic way to, um, to, to find a job or find friends or whatever. Um, so USCRI it does refugee resettlement in Des Moines, and it was a it's a great field to get into, especially if you're really looking to do kind of the dirty work, because you are working with people right as they arrive. You know, I was uh, doing employment for a while, so I was helping refugees get their first job in the United States, which was, which was um, really an amazing experience to watch them get their first paycheck and uh, you know be able to say that I earned this money. Um, and then I transitioned into resettlement, so. I you know, picked people up at the airport and I took them to medical appointments and I enrolled them in school. And it's really the hands-on on, th on things that um, I really enjoy. And you know, maybe that's not what you're interested in. Maybe you're more interested in the policy uh, side of maybe refugee resettlement. And uh, USCRI is a national organization. It is headquartered in DC. So if you have sort of that will and drive to get to you know, maybe DC and do that kind of work there, that's an option. But um, I would say maybe start at the ground level so you have an idea of, you know, what what it is that caseworkers do. Um, USCRI is one of, I guess, 11 agencies that does refugee resettlement, so it's not the only one. Other ones, Catholic Charities or World Relief or IRC. So there's plenty of agencies out there that actually do the, the resettlement work. Um, and really in whatever state you go to, there's or city or major city, there will be some some organization there to help refugees. And if maybe you're interested in more global health or public health, but you still want to work in the refugee side of things, um, there's always you know, visiting nurse services. You can go into refugee homes and help them with um, you know, making sure they're taking their medicine correctly or making sure the kids' um, doctor's appointments are being met and really working with the parents one-on-one -on -one in their homes to make sure that you know, the refugees are, are succeeding in life. Um, um, what else say? Um, my time at USCRI was really great because I really developed um, a good a career base, a good knowledge of kind of what I wanted to do next. And um, when I got laid off, it was completely surprising. I was not really expecting it, but you know, when you're working in nonprofits, um, grants and budgets, they're always, it's always something. And uh, you know, it happens. You know, I'm only 23 and I got laid off. I never imagined that I would say those words. So I had to learn about things like filing for unemployment and uh, how to get back on my health, parents' health insurance and all that. Um, but just make sure that, you know, like I said, network and, and look for, for ways and avenues that you can take those skills that you've learned in your first job and put it towards your second job. Um, you know, what I'll be doing at Easter Seals is very similar to what I was doing at USCRI just with a different client demographic and I'm very excited about um, what's next and how I can take the skills that I learned at USCRI and apply it um, to, to what I'll be doing in the future. So, I guess that's my <laughs> Great, thank you so much. We have a, a few minutes within sort of Laura's um, 
first section of today's program. So if you have any specific questions uh, for Laura right off the bat that you'd like to ask. Yeah. Uh, what's a piece of advice you have for either like undergrads <clears throat> or grad students here that you think is like really helpful in the international field? Yeah, I would say study abroad. I think that's, if you're all international studies majors, I think all of you probably are interested in that at some point, but don't just study abroad necessarily in um, a normal place or a typical place. Take, take the chance and go somewhere crazy. You know, Jordan terrified my parents. They did not, <laughs> didn't exactly want me to go, go there and... Uh, be in the Middle East, but it definitely made my um, job working with refugees, I could maybe relate to them a little bit more because I had experienced a culture that was very different than, you know, even one that I had experienced in high school um, in Taiwan. And uh, it, it kind of gave me a good rapport, especially when I was working with the Iraqi refugees. Um, I had something in common, like, oh yeah, did you go to that falafel restaurant in Jordan? Because it was great. <laughs> Um, but building that rapport and making sure you have that sort of, um, I guess, uh, personality, if that makes sense, that people can relate to, and I think you can get that through experience. And even if study abroad is maybe outside of the financial realm, even doing something within the United States, like I, I did the STLF, I, I think it's still active on campus, so it's a spring break, volunteer spring break trip, and we went throughout the southern United States and we helped you know, a woman clean out her home after a hurricane in, in Galveston. And, you know, just even that is character building. And you really kind of learn compassion and you learn ways to um, relate to people that maybe you wouldn't have gotten just by taking your classes here on campus. <coughs> yeah. um, were you involved in any student orgs when you went here? I did STLF. Um, I, the first year I did it, as a, I was only here for three years, so the first year I did it as a freshman um, over spring break and it was an amazing time and made a lot, of, a lot of friends with that. And then the second year I came back and led it, led a tour. Um, so there's definitely room to, if you, especially if you lead a tour there, you know, kind of gain management skills and how to budget and how to lead a group, a bus of 40 some college students. So. That's a, that's a, it was a great time. Um, I'm assuming it's still up and going, so check it out if you get the chance. Um, yeah, right now it's mostly Burmese, so coming um, from Malaysia and Thailand, you have the um, Iraqis, and then you have the Nepalis, um, Bhutanese coming from Nepal, and those are kind of winding down. The next big um, push will be the Congolese coming in the next, I keep pushing it back, but hopefully the next, soon. Um, and then, you know, people ask about Syria, and there's really no, no plan at this point to 